Dad had a grocery store. And we sat here and many a day up on this lock and did our things. Told our war stories. <laughs> so what were you saying, Louie, that was in here? There was coal in here during the war. During World War II, they stored soft coal. And the reasoning for it was they couldn't get to Pennsylvania because of the rationing and the, the weather of the roads. So they brought it up by the truckload and stored it here and then took it out of here during the winter. They hauled during the summer so that they could have it for winter usage. It, this was done by Case Dendecker and uh, the Graf Coal Company. How high uh, on the lock walls was the coal? Oh gosh, I would say it was, a, oh gosh, a good 15 anyway, 15 feet up. It was just almost, well, say three blocks down from the top, it was full to there. And they just had it all the way from that end to here. And they uh, took it out by the truckload when they needed it in some other places. And that's, that's how they stored the coal. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, the late 30s, early 40s, we used to come down here and catch snapping turtles and turtles and the regular little grass turtles and some of the there was some fish unbelievably that would make their way in here and uh, we'd play with those and catch those and along the, the top of the uh, that would be the west wall that would there was a mushroom uh, building there where a man by the name of Sam Drew grew mushrooms and uh, he would supply the whole area with uh, fresh mushrooms and as kids we'd go and help him pick mushrooms and stuff like that and get it out and he ran what is now the East North Grill but it was Drew's Hotel and he had uh, a livery for the mules when the mules would switch here in uh, Newark they changed teams they had the garages that would have been west of the hotel and all they had the, the new teams in there and the man ran the livery stable there and then they'd come over here and uh, you know c continue on down the canal pulling the boats that's uh, that was probably there until 47 or 8 then they tore them down you also mentioned there used to be a sawmill yeah there's a sawmill where new cut is now there was a raceway that was a big expansion of the canal it ran clear back to East Union Street and there was a viaduct that ran down behind the buildings to run the mill on uh, which would be Lyon Street now and uh, it also ran the parts of uh, the lumber mill and I got the name of it at home but I don't it don't stay in my head right now uh, then later on Nichols was built in there which was in part of the raceway, and uh, the Zeger home was built, and Newcut was built. And when Newcut was first built, that was when Rodden's Dairy left Lyon Street and was moved up there, probably, I would say, 1942, maybe, three. And it became later on, it became Cosgroves. And, now it's Nuka, but that was all part of the raceway. And the village used, utilized it later on as a dump to fill in along East Union, clear to uh, the back of where Nichols building is now. Speaking, speaking of uh, dump, you were responsible for what there in 59? No, back in the, in the 30s, when we were, I worked for a, a man by the name of A.I. Vandermill, who was a, a trucker, and uh, he, let's see, how old was I? Uh, it was 1942, 43, 44. We tended what they call stokers, because we didn't have the gas furnace uh, then. We had stoker-fired furnaces, and we would collect the ashes from places like, for instance, the 
Capitol Theater. Uh, we had all of uh, Main Street, which would have been Woolworths and the Masonic Building and all the way down through. Uh, we would take the stoker ashes out of there, put them on a truck, and then we dumped them in, which would be lock 58, is that right? 59. Uh, 59. And and what else did you dump in 59? Dumped everything in there. I mean, there's most. There had been other stuff. Another man by the name of Klein was a. Uh, he was a refuse collector. I don't think that there was an awful lot of what you'd call. Well, there's some famous that you dumped. Oh, in. I put a Model T in there. And well, that's what I was waiting for. <laughs> Nineteen. Yeah, that'd be in the thirties. Okay. This lock here, which is what, 58? Yes. 58 was our playground. And on the east side of the lock, during the war, everyone had a victory garden. And my dad, who was Jim D. John, he had his garden up here so that we could feed our family and, and sell some of the produce in our grocery store, uh, which was D. John Superette. So I had a lot of activity here on the north side of this lock, and we fished at on the barge canal at the north side of the lock here. This was where the kids in East Newark all came to play. We uh, grew up here. And uh, also, we've heard something about uh, lock 57. Do you want to clear us that's up That's the on? one that's not... There is another lock below here. Uh, it was the last lock before the canal turned to go under the West Shore Railroad. There is a picture of it in the deluge hose room in City Hall that was taken back in the 1800s. And it'll show you exactly how that lock was. That lock was not as large as these two. They, it was a much smaller lock, and uh, we played on it until the state took over the the uh, west end of Coburn Park. The west end of Coburn Park was taken back by the state because we had a golf, or I'm sorry, we had a ice skating rink there during the war, and uh, then the state wanted it back to put their DOT building up there, so the village in turn swapped ends with them. And uh, which a lot of people don't know, Coburn Park was formed from the dredging out of the barge canal uh, that when it was dug, they brought that fill up onto what is now Coburn Park, and that's how it was formed. And the man by the name of Dan Overdorf was the shovel operator uh, that was digging the barge canal, and he later on became a employee of the village of Newark, he ran their heavy equipment. And uh, he uh, liked Newark so well, that's why he stayed here when he helped build the barge coming through. But that lock should be able to be found if uh, we use that photograph. Uh, you could go down there and I'm sure if you figured it out from that, you, you'd find it. Now, also, you said uh, there, uh, there are three men buried down there in Coburn Park. Yeah. Want to tell us that story? According to uh, Mr. Overdorf, who was op the operator on the steam dredge as uh, they were coming under uh, what is now what was the West Shore Railroad Bridge and big digging that part of the barge, which goes to the Lock 28 now, uh, they took that which was a lot of blue clay, if you know, if you go up on Colburn Park, you'll see that. And they used to have a donkey motor that pulled some dump cars full of the dredgings, and they brought it up and they'd dump it on Colburn Park. That's how it was formed. And one day, there were three men up on the park. They were the guys that shoveled the dirt back that they couldn't move with the teams of horses and stuff. And uh, the guy with the donkey motor come up pulling the dump cars and he went along the edge and he tripped the cars and the guys were over the bank apparently eating their 
noon meal and uh, they were buried underneath the dredgings and as far as we know to this day they're still there as uh, as monuments to to the barge canal being built and I don't know the dates but I, that was a, uh, a story given to me by Mr. Overdorf. <laughs>